Uh, this is Luke from NGN, and today we're going to walk through the newest hero to Dota 2, Dawnbreaker. She's come out with the patch 7.29, um, and we've already published the guide on our website. Um, so this will be the one video, one blog for that guide. Um, if you want a more comprehensive or maybe itemized list of what you should be getting when, or you learn better by not so much watching a video, but by reading and having a set list, you can check out the blog associated with this guide, uh, and that'll help you a lot there. Uh, as the name suggests, it's the Keep It Simple Stupid Guide. Um, it's designed to do just that, keep things simple. If you're an inexperienced player to Dota, or you're new, you're just checking out the game because you've seen the Dota anime, or you like the look of the new patch and you thought you'd give Dota a try, this is a great starting point. You pick up Dawnbreaker, the new hero, just like everyone else. No one has more experience than you at this point because she's new for everyone. Um, for more experienced players, some of these points are going to seem a bit um, over comprehensive, uh, but if you're just starting out or you haven't played Dota in a while and you're coming back, this is going to be a guide for you. So, without further ado, we're going to look at starting items. Quelling Blade is great on Dawnbreaker. You get the full potential of Quelling Blade. You get the 12 extra damage each time you hit a creep. This is going to help you clear creep waves much quicker. You can do camps much quicker. You're going to get gold much quicker, essentially. And with that, you're going to get your later items easier. You can build. It's a good starting point to build. Plus, if you're helping out your support player in clearing trees for vision, we're going to thank you for that as well. The next item we're going to look at is Tango. Uh, as the guide suggests, taking damage early is pretty unavoidable. You're going to be contesting runes. You might accidentally pull the creep wave aggro. You're going to get harassed by the enemy safe laner. Everything. So taking damage, unavoidable, in most scenes. If you don't take damage early game whatsoever, you're either doing something really right or really wrong. So we grab a tango, can eat a tree, get some health back. The next two items are gauntlets of strength, some stat sticks. So if we get plus three strength, we get plus three damage, we get some more health, we get some more health regen, helps us stay alive. If we're staying alive longer, we're staying in our lane longer, we're annoying the safe lane longer, we're getting more gold, we, we don't have any downtime with deaths, it's just really good. After that, we have exactly 100 gold left, and that works in perfectly. You can see a bit later on, we get the magic wand. It's a very good item on Dawnbreaker, and the ingredients are exactly 100 gold. Well, not all of them, but the ones that we're getting are exactly 100 gold. We get plus one all attributes, and you'll hear me say this in other guides, all attributes is always Good. We get armor from the agility, we get mana and mana regen from the intelligence, and we get damage, HP, and HP regen from the strength. So we're surviving longer, we can use our abilities more, and we get our last hits much easier. Anything we can do to make last hitting easier for a new or returning player is a good thing. So, Iron Branch. After the uh, sort of start of the game, we're getting some gold up on we want to build our braces. Braces provide overall stats again, but more so uh, in our main stat, which is strength. So we have even more bulk. We're going to be quite difficult to take down in the early stages of the game once we have double bracer. Double bracer provides a lot of strength. Plus 10 strength, it's a lot of bulk. We're going to be more, you know, resistant. They're going to be spamming abilities at us. Maybe they want to harass us. That's fine. We've got double bracer. We're quite bulky, and with that comes the strength. The strength gives attack damage, so what's that? Easier last hits. Last hits, we need them. Simple as that, we need them to get gold. Anything we can do to make that easier, we're going to do. You'll hear me say that a lot. We're getting braces. The next item is the magic wand. Offlaners that rely on mana. <laughs> Mars is a good example, Dawnbreaker is another. We, we need mana to get our abilities off. Our abilities are very, very good. And an easy way to do that is to rely on them feeding you mana. You can do this by every time they use one, you get one. So you get the mana for every time they use an ability near you. You get the health, you can use it in a bind. Say if you're running away, you have bugger all health. You need that extra little boost to get away. Use your magic stick stacks, you're okay. Or the difference being you're chasing them and you need the mana, you can use that to secure a kill. Again, you get overall stats, you get an extra one here. 
than you would the two iron branches. Overall stats, never a bad thing. Next item is our movement speed item. Like, you, if you need the boost of speed, like you're up against Juggernaut or something like that, where movement speed is everything, absolutely, you can put the boots early if you want. There's, there's no problem with that. But this is the keep it simple guide. And the more experience to get, the easier it'll be for you to adapt. Adapt to the draft, yours and theirs, uh, and how the game is unfolding. So you'll know when you need to prioritize items earlier. Um, Juggernaut is a really good example of this. If you can't run away from the spin, you're going to get hurt by the spin a lot. So maybe you prioritize boots earlier than you would some of the other items. But for now, in the sake of keeping things simple, phase boots. Phase boots works really well, especially if you're not considering getting Blink Dagger. You need that extra bit of mobility here. Um, you just need a mobility item in general. You need the plus 45, so why not upgrade it so it's doing more for you as well? You get the full damage, much like Quelling Blade, you get the full damage potential in 18, plus you don't have a lot of armor at this point. You don't have a lot of agility at this point. So anything that you can do to help you in that wise, survive right clicks, it's going to be better. Plus, extra movement speed, never a bad thing, works well with some items that we're going to intro introduce later. And the next item, Orb of Corrosion, and like I said, if you need to be slowing them down earlier just to have that annoyance factor or something that gets really, really punished by that slow, you can prioritize Orb of Venom much earlier, even in your starting items if need be. But for now, we're gonna put it here in the upgraded version, Orb of Corrosion. We get a little bump of health, 150 is not a lot, but at this stage of the game, it's not bad. We get the slow, a little bit of damage, a little bit of negligible damage to be honest, um, and, and the armor reduction. Very, very good. So the more armor we reduce off them, the more our right clicks are going to be doing. They're slower, they are having a much more difficult time getting away. So they're more susceptible in two ways. They're slower, reduce armor, helps you and your teammates follow up. You initiate, they can't get away, they're taking more damage, it's very good. Synergize as well with Echo Saber. Echo Saber is sort of our big first ticket, big ticket item. Once we get Echo Saber, then we can start bullying. We can start taking fights if we need to. If we're getting pulled away from farm and we need to contest things, Echo Saber helps a lot. What happens is after a cooldown, we get a double strike, a, a second attack. So our first is applying those debuffs that we got earlier in Orb of Corrosion, and then immediately following up with a second strike. This works extremely well with Orb of Corrosion and some later game items like Skull Basher, we are getting a second chance to stun, and our abilities in Luminosity. Luminosity means after three attacks, our next crit, our next attack will crit, and we get some healing. So the faster we ramp up those three attacks, the better. If we have Echo Saber, we're getting two in instantaneously. It just works extremely well on Dawn Breaker. I've just clicked out of the guide. So, back to items. Next is Vanguard. If we're playing offlane, we need some survivability, we need some bulk, that's our thing. Vanguard is a very good example of this, and it builds into later items. So, we get a big chunk of health, big chunk of HP regen, so we can stay in that lane longer. And, we get the block. That's great, yeah? There's not much more to say about Vanguard, it just provides really good stats and the block. It's going to help you survive a lot of engagements where you wouldn't without it. The next item is one we've already spoken about, Skull Basher. Gives you stats you like, you're a strength hero, you like strength. Simple as that. You get more bulk, you get more damage, but what we're really here is for the passive bash. Grant you a chance to stun. So each hit, 25% chance to stun. That's really good. Helps you lock down, helps you interrupt. It's just really annoying to play against a hero who is skull bashing you consistently and constantly. With our Echo Saber, we're getting double the chance because we're whacking them twice on a cooldown, but we're whacking them twice. So we grab Skull Bash, we just become a really annoying offlaner, and as an offlaner, that's what you want to be. Next is BKB, and BKB is where I will say that you don't have to stick to a set list here. Like, if you find yourself getting locked down a lot, um, if you find that their spells are having a really great impact on you, you're not being able to get off what you need to get off, 
BKB comes a much higher priority. You can list it here, here. You can list it basically anywhere. If you need it early, get it early. Don't hesitate. If you need it to survive more than you need to hurt people with your Echo, with your Skull Bash more than you, get BKB early, absolutely. It makes you spell immune. So anything that could lock you down, prevent you from getting off your abilities or right clicks, it's, you walk straight through it. Like fire field, ignore. Prioritize BKB if you need to, absolutely. The more games you get under your belt, the more you're going to get a feel of when you should be getting it. The next item is the natural progression of Vanguard and Skull Basher. And if you're experienced in the game or any way, or even if you're coming back from the game, you're going to know that they build into Abyssal. Abyssal did get nerfed recently. They took away its blink. Um, and that's a pretty hefty nerf, but it just takes an item that was ridiculously good back down to very, 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 very good. It's not useless anymore just because it's been nerfed. It doesn't need to be totally ignored. It combines the two, so you get the bag space. The stats are, speak for themselves, huge damage, big chunk of health and regen. So you're going to be surviving longer to get those stuns off. Strength. There you go. Stuns a target. You've got a point to click. So no longer does it blink to stun, but it still provides a guaranteed stun on a 35 second cooldown. Plus you get the effects of Skullbasher and Vanguard to boot. Uh, next is some um, damage in Sanj and Yasha. Uh, Sanj and Yasha, it doesn't really add a whole lot new, but what it does add is it just, not so much add, but just turns up what we already have to 11. Makes everything we already have going for us much better. We get attack speed for luminosity, we get status resistance for bulk, uh, strength from damage, we get some moves, movement speed on top of our phase boost, so we, we're getting there, we're getting quickly, and we're bulky. It's just, it doesn't add anything necessarily new, but it just turns what we already have up to 11, and that's great. Some situational items or things that you consider if you have extra gold, the game's running along, or you want to experiment. Say you're using this guide, um, and you want to change things up a little bit. You, you think you're getting a bit more experience with Dawnbreaker and you'd like to change things up. You can consider adding a Blink Dagger in, helps with your initiation. You can consider really big damage spike in Deso, um, or even a Radiance Carrier. Dawnbreaker is not a bad Radiance Carrier. You're gonna be around, around for a very long time, so you're gonna be carrying Radiance for a very long time. If you're hard to kill and you've got Radiance, well, one plus one is two. Next we are going to move on to abilities and talents. First ability, Starbreaker. So the Swirl and Stun um, works really, really well to clear waves, uh, deal damage to enemy heroes if they don't know what they're doing, getting closer to you, getting closer to you, getting closer to you, you punish them. Starbreaker. Get some damage off and, and you get a stun, good to help your team initiate. Um, and when we get longer stun duration, the more we level it up. So it is a priority, Ellie. You can see that. We're going one, four, five, seven. It's a priority. Celestial Hammer. We throw and return hammer on return. It creates a path of fire that slows. We can recall it early while it is lingering, and we will suck towards it, and it will suck towards us, and the two shall meet in the middle. Someone's running away from you. Whack them from the hammer, bring it back for the slow, bring yourself closer, you get on top of them, you follow up with Starbreaker, because you're on top of them, great combination. Celestial Hammer, they can't go anywhere, Starbreaker for the damage, and if you need the stun, the stun's at the end there, so your team can follow up. Great initiation combo. Luminosity is a passive, and for those unfamiliar with the term, that means you don't need to cast it. So if you find yourself playing your first game of Dota, your first few games of Dota, and you're constantly thinking, why do I have button prompts for my other skills but not Luminosity? Luminosity does it itself. You don't need to do it. After three attacks, your next one does additional damage in the form of a critical hit and heals allies around you. Now, with that said, Luminosity sounds great on paper, and it is, but with increasing levels, you don't get a percentage of that 35. You don't get more. You don't get more healing, so it doesn't go from 35 to 40 to 50, anything like that. It stays at that 35 feeling for allies, so it means that it's not the highest priority for us. 
we get a point early to get the 35%, but because that doesn't scale terribly well, it scales good elsewise, you get the healing from yourself, the crit, um, the penalty stays the same, but it doesn't scale very well. So we, we get a point early, so we do get the healing, but because it doesn't scale well, it doesn't increase, we finish it last. Solar Guardian. You pick a point on the map that is close to an ally. You are now damaging that point and healing allies. After a short time, you zip over there, you crash down, you deal damage, and you stun. It sounds good, it looks good, and it is good. Um, use it to bail out allies that are in an unfavorable matchup. Use it to help follow up after initiation. Um, just use it to harass, to heal. It's great. Use it as much as you can, as often as you can. You don't, like, at, at max level and with the talents, only 80 second cooldown. So you, you can be a bit liberal with this. Moving on to talents. At level 10, we've got the option between plus 20 move speed and 8 strength. We're getting Sergeant Yasha. Um, obviously, you won't have it at 10. And we're getting phase boots again level dependent but the point is we have plenty of move speed between the two even more if we've got blink dagger and we've got the global so i feel like the eight strength comes in handy a lot more often than the movement speed if you want extra movement speed or you find yourself needing it by all means but i find myself in the early dawn breaker stages picking strength so i've recommended strength solar guardian cooldown um Look, the plus 20 damage might seem appealing. You might be a bit frustrated with your damage by this point of the game. You're an offlaner. You, you're very similar to DK, and the fact that if you don't take these opportunities to get damage, it's kind of hard to get them. Not hard to get them, but you'll find yourself being frustrated by not having them. But Solar Guardian, as I mentioned, is just really insanely good, and you want to be using it as often as you can, as effectively as you can. So taking it back from 100 second cooldown to 80, Kind of hard to get past. You can get damage other ways, but without Octarine Core, which you really don't want to build on Dawnbreaker, you can't reduce cooldown other ways. So you grab it here. Another difficult decision because you see that we have Echo Saber for the double hit, building into Luminosity. And you, it, it is good. I, I will say that the, the Echo Saber double crit, it feels good. You, you can build up crits twice as quick. You 40% more damage. It, it's all very, very good. But having being able to use Starbreaker whenever you want is just so much better. After you initiate, you, you, it's double guaranteed stun. So you're never really without one. Between your Abyssal Click, two Starbreaker charges, you're never really without one if you need it. And that's kind of hard to give up. 25. We have meme cast range at 1,100. That means the hammer goes super far and you can suck yourself towards it super far. And the reign of the line of fire is really, really long. But as I mentioned, we're investing in Solar Guardian. So the larger the radius, the more damage, the more healing. And we're using it often. We, we've skilled everywhere else we could have for Solar Guardian, we're going to continue that trend here in the radius. That's just about going to cover it for the MGN Keep It Simple Dawnbreaker Guide. Uh, if you've seen something or you think, hey, Luke, MGN, you guys have missed this really key thing that I think new players should know for Dawnbreaker, by all means, let us know and we'll add it in or we'll chat to you about it. But for now, keep an eye on the website for more videos and uh, blogs about Dota 2, um, and yeah, we'll keep you posted.